Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stone Avoid Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Phillips, joined as always with Don Bowie. Hey. And unfortunately, no Patrick Collins this week. Uh, we did skip a week, and we are a little bit behind on schedule of a few things that we were trying to put out. Uh, so sorry about that, guys, and hopefully we'll be able to get back up on content with you guys. Although we did get the Q video up, so hopefully you guys have taken a look at that. That was something we've been working on for a while now, and actually have a few of those lined up to release for you guys. Um, just sadly, we had a few technical difficulties as it came to our last video that we shot. We have only the first video of the uh, full set review up yeah. for you guys. And we would have got it out for you guys had we not had a problem with the rest of it. And since Patrick's not here right now, we can't exactly finish it for you guys. So definitely look for that still coming up. It's just going to be a little bit late. But outside of that... Uh, yeah. Hope you guys like the cube video. It's pretty interesting decks out there. Yeah, definitely. It, it's a different insight into what's going on in the game, what cards are actually powerful, what cards uh, have really good synergies that people haven't really thought about. Uh, unlike the current meta right now where we're looking at, it just seems to be more R&R. R&R, Alice's World. There was an R&R Red Aggro that won? Yeah, the, uh, which is interesting. The Persia card from the new set seems to be what is like one of the biggest powerhouses behind a lot of decks right now the pursuing of flames i believe yeah she has she's a three drop uh 700 attack 400 defense but she has first strike swiftness uh if you pay a green it gets flying and uh one other ability that i can target think, attack yeah target that's what makes her even yeah. better uh, and when she dies, she does 500 damage to your opponent. So that's really leading a lot of decks why you want to run red and go really fast. And even in cube, uh, because we updated the cube, you guys will eventually see that as well. Uh, she's just powerhouse in there. She just seems to be the best thing you can do on turn three. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you had any thoughts about what else is going on with... Uh, what's up? It just... The decks look the same. I mean, there hasn't been that many AGPs since the release of the moonlit savior so no. yeah it's interesting to see what actually goes on but it looks about the same lancelot ruck eggs <laughs> Cthugas, yeah necromancy yeah necromancy i would like to see a little bit more of a little bit more black and a few decks would be mm -hmm. nice but yeah it seems like there's not a huge mix up and that's of course at the start of a new format you always have aggressive decks being the best thing you can possibly do because nobody's figured out how to play with all of the cards yet so just smashing face is obviously the best thing to do when you have no idea what else to do uh so i'm hoping that we start to see some more control decks or some more variety come up soon mm -hmm. considering that we have all of these cards at our disposal yeah uh sukiyomi noble is a card that i really want to see play with yeah it's a strong card that's I, i'm most excited to see how that eventually forms into a deck that right there is something I really want to play, and I tried to experiment with on our first week of actually having the set. I did terrible with the card, um, and then came back next week with a strong red deck and 3 0 determined, so I'm not really helping uh, <laughs> this at all, but sometimes you just gotta play what's good. Yeah, and let us know in the comments below what cards you like the most out of the Moonlit Savior, what cards you're seeing the most play, the most oppressive. Yeah, it's something that we're going to see change a lot over the next couple of weeks, so um, definitely just get out there and brewing, guys, because I would love to see something else really unique. Something really unique is the Ryoma deck. It's not really unique, <laughs> but uh, it's getting a lot of hype. I like that a deck like that can exist, or at least the idea of it having that ability. And what, what he's talking about is there's a... Uh, Ryoma is the name of the... Uh, it's a Musketeer in Vingolf that you can <laughs> play for one with Puss in Boots. And combining that with the Earth uh, Primogenitor's Regalia is basically a free mox. Yeah, and for people that don't know what a mox is, that is in Magic, it's a uh, artifact that you can play on the field for zero, and it produces one uh, will, resource, whatever you want to call it. Um, in this deck, you do need a lot of stuff to pull that off, and it's mm -hmm. kind of a little too cute for me. I, it dies really easy to uh, Flame of the Outer Worlds or anything else that hits all the small I mean, creatures. You and can it's kind of slow and clunky. <laughs> Turn one Gwyber is possible. You can definitely yes. get the nut draws, but it's kind of... It hinges all on yeah. that. And I could see somebody trying to make that deck a little bit better, but for right now, it's not really anything that I'm too worried about. Yeah. Uh, Turn one Gwyber, turn two Alice's World. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Just really hard to pull off. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we do have a way to make the game look a little bit more interesting. However, not in my personal way of making the game look more interesting. The uh, what would uh, the artwork of the cards, the cosplay? Yeah, the cosplay. There we go. I was trying to remember the word. <laughs> the cosplay arts. Uh, they're really cool to have something like that for the girls who dress up and mm-hmm. things like that. And I like the idea behind it and I like everything about it. However, when you see one in person, it looks a little cheap. And it looks like it's really low budget and like Yeah. It's like what a card game would do if they couldn't afford someone to draw art for them is what they look like to me. And I like them. I want to collect them because I want them as a thing, but I don't want to ever use them and that's a bit of a problem. A lot of people say that's super creepy. Like I know personally yeah. the promo posters with the cosplayers the the promo poster is extra weird because it, she's just staring directly at you like she's trying to just devour your soul yeah um, i mean and the one that had the yellow eyes the kaguya one that was sitting up on the front page of their website <laughs> every time one of my employees would like slightly jump back every time you saw it because it was just shocking. in your face just huge eyeballs just staring at you yeah and adding on to that we're actually getting uh for the promotional cards for this month or not this month but uh Coming up soon, it is the cards for April. Uh, we're getting a Waterstone, and then we're getting a cosplay art, uh, which is going to be the fle- Reflections of Dystopia, uh, which is, of course, Alice's, um, Dark Alice's uh, card that uh, helps her god art be cost two black less. Less. Yeah. I can totally talk right now. Uh, and it also, when you cast it, makes your opponent sacrifice a creature... Uh, which is a really good card. Uh, however, I don't understand why they chose this one necessarily for a... It's not a really popular card. <clears throat> it might be popular if, like, Dark Alice is popular, but it, right. it's not a playable card. No, it's or, like, really weird. It's not, like, a niche <clears throat> card, too, that people like. Like, the Alice's uh, Wanderer, yeah. which was super beautiful. No, I understood when they did, like, the Cheshire Cat mm-hmm. alternate art with a cosplayer. I don't know if you've seen that one or not. Yeah, that's... Uh, that one, I understand that they'd put a girl on it because that makes sense. I don't remember... Like, this is a spell. This isn't a creature or resonator. This just mm-hmm. this just seems weird to me. <laughs> uh, she looks lovely, but once again, I don't want to play mm-hmm. with these cards for, or for any reason. It just yeah, seems... It doesn't seem to play. So. Well, even if it was playable, I'm saying... Yes. I don't. I don't know if I want to play. Like, I, if somebody <laughs> handed me a place out of the uh, the Cheshire Cats and said, "Throw these in your deck." Of course, you use them. You run Alice's World. Go ahead. I'd probably just leave up my old ones and set those to the side and not do that. Yeah, because it doesn't I mean, match anything in my deck. They were pretty rare, though. Like those cosplay. Cards, they are. They're super. I, I might put them in the cube just <laughs> for the fun of it That'd if I cool. get one. But it's like yeah. two hundred dollars or something. Something crazy. Yeah, and I got my think... Reflect and Refrain uh, Uber when it first came out. I Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, but this is like after time has passed and now it's and 200, still... so it's, it's well, pretty R&R impressive. Well, still 200. Yeah, r and is seeing the most play. <laughs> I'm just giving you crap. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The artwork's a little odd. <laughs> odd, sorry. Um, although we did get a lot of other artwork for the Battle of Adarakia that's coming up, which is the next set after this, and I'm actually really excited for seeing what I think is Rizard holding a book, or at least Human Rizard. Um, I had it up, but I accidentally closed it. <laughs> yeah, Rizard uh, looks kind of nice now. He might be like a light resonator, maybe? Yeah. Something not dark. Definitely not dark. Unless the dark side went nice. Well, considering that we've seen a few other things spoiled that look like they're altering what the personality of the uh, ruler or resonator would be, um, on the same vein, uh, Prissia mm-hmm. now looks like she's completely gone nuts and is probably a dark resonator in the next set. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I. She has been consistently one of the most interesting printed cards in each set since we've seen her. Uh, you could say that, of course, maybe the uh, Four Secret Beasts deck, um, um, I'm saying about her, isn't necessarily the best, but everything else that they printed with her has really been cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Valentina, yes, as a ruler, has been more consistently badass, but I highly doubt we're getting another ruler version of her anytime soon. 
She's dead, right? Yeah, that's kind of why I think that we're not going to see her again. <laughs> Ghost Valentina, maybe? That could be kind of cool. Dark Valentina. But as far as the spoilers are hinting, we are not seeing anything like that. Although we do see another time uh, ruler or time wizard type person that mm-hmm. was in the spoilers. We have, of course, those giant bunnies that we talked about last time all the way like three weeks ago. And one thing that I'm super excited about is the possibility of werewolves in the next set. Werewolves. So werewolves usually have like two sides, right? Like the human side and then the werewolf side. Okay. Do you think that they could do something do like something that? something for a ruler that way? I mean, they kind of had that with the... Uh, um, little Red? Yeah, Little Red, the fake moon or whatever her name was. Yeah. Where she flipped back and forth. And that'd be a cool thing to uh, re-expand upon. Uh, a lot what of the is... werewolf cards were just werewolves in the last set, so... Well, all the way back in Grimm. Which yeah. I actually thought, since we're going back to Grimm, I thought it'd take that long for us to get back to werewolves again. But... There's uh, the artwork of the girl that's sitting in the tree, mm-hmm. and the other uh, girl who's kind of got a weird pose, but she looks like she's kind of menacing, uh, like she, uh, that one, in case you haven't seen it. Yeah, she she's looks She's holding her cool. weapon from behind. Those, to me, suggest that we're going to be seeing werewolves again. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I like werewolves. Leap Guru. Yeah. Goes great with Crimson Girl. <laughs> Uh, it would be kind of irritating, though, if they're keyed off of other werewolves in the set because we wouldn't have that much support for when this actually rotates out. And that's actually really quick before we go too far into talking about all these artworks. Uh, one thing that we had a uh, comment on earlier, and I get asked this in person a lot, is when does stuff rotate out? Mm-hmm. And for people who aren't aware, nothing rotates when the next set comes out. We're still going to have Grimm, and we're still going to have... Uh, all of Alice's block. Really? Or the next set? The or? next set. Yeah. It's when the next cluster comes out, not the next set. A f- A4, which is the Battle for Adarakia, will still be a part of everything. The same as this set was a part of everything. When we see the next rotation is when we go back to Grimm, original Grimm will fall off. And that's what we'll lose. Are we going back to Grimm after Battle for Adarakia? Yes. And okay. that's going to be... Uh, I don't know what they're going to call that generation because it can't be G... G or A. B. Yeah, so... Either which way, yeah. we're going to... Yeah. <laughs> G, B, 1. No. Uh, whatever they want to call it, we're going back to Grimm eventually, so... Uh, that That's when original Grimm will then fall off and we'll lose any support that we had from that set, like Cheshire Cats, all the Dual Stones, things like that, will fall off. But it's going to still take a little while. We still have another two and a half months until the next set comes out and then another three months from there so you basically have five and a half months until we rotate anything at all yeah and providing it doesn't release anything in the van golf set so we actually have quite a while before that occurs so if you still are wondering if you should buy a cheshire cats still probably go ahead also this is completely uh up to your store whether or not they want to rotate out they can completely you know keep everything in standard which our store is going to run two different tournaments for yeah there's an origin format which includes everything from valhalla forward without life break and then there's new frontiers which is just the two current clusters yeah but uh the one that i'm going to uh support is since nobody has valhalla cards in my store and nobody wants to go pick them up Mm -hmm. especially because the price tag of them are actually shooting up so old cards that you can't play with actually still go up in value who knew yeah uh we're just going to stick with everything Grim Block and Forward. So everything, it's like uh, after Bifrost is what some people call that. Or whatever you want to say. Everything from that Grim set Forward from here on mm-hmm. out will be playable in the US. Uh, and especially at my store where we play. Where we'll have both New Frontier and everything after Bifrost. And I think that's uh, a good way to keep it. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be really sad when all those dual stones rotate out. Because yeah. they make the game so fluid. I really think we're going to see some unique new style of dual stones coming up in the next set. Well, I would we, be very surprised if we didn't have more. We are going back to Grimm, and mm-hmm. the Grimm lore rotate around these dual stones and the true stones and all that. Oh, yeah. So they might bring those back as well, maybe just reprints. Yeah, however they go about it. Uh, I would love to see something different. Uh, maybe dual stones that came into the field tapped unless certain conditions were met. 
of course, this is kind of just my love of ma uh, in magic, having all these like different stones that did all these different abilities. Uh, it's, it's something I would like to see in this game as well. Do you think that you are going to copy like magic, like the fetch lands and the pain lands and the shock lands and all that? Stuff like that. Uh, I don't imagine they're going to copy that exactly, but I do imagine they're going to have something like that. Yeah. Uh, just because it would... They have a different way of being able to play that because they have the separate mana stone uh, base were able to do different things with it and I would just love to see how they could explore that space that design space uh, because of right now your stone deck is kind of Perfect. you know but uh, still a little bit of random off the top I don't know I'd like to see them yeah. toy with different things maybe make things less consistent but still have dual stones or but this game why I like it is this just consistency. Right. You don't have or to worry about Or maybe make it more stones. consistent. But yeah. I, I would just like to see them play with the design space is what I'm getting at here. And one thing that they've done is they made the rulers that allow you to play essentially dual colors without running two color stones, mm -hmm. which has been really nice. Uh, however, we do have a few more artwork. It looks like the uh, Time Wizard guy or a buddy Elisaris. of his. Yeah. Got a bad Seems ass. to be doing something interesting here. Uh, as well as a few other of our works. Um, they had a lot of stuff spoiled in the trailer for us. But uh, I, I really haven't been able to find anything concrete that really says what else is coming up in the next set. Yeah. Um, Just a bunch of artwork right now. No, mm -hmm. no new cards or anything. However, one other interesting thing that we did get to see is a promotional card... For the upcoming movie of Force of Will, uh, with an actual address to go to, which is just the Force of Will uh, dot com, but slash movie, and has a little bit of details up there, but not much. It's a. Uh, I'm really hoping that they print these as like pass outs for the store or something that I can give to people. Like this is, this is really cool to have. Like just yeah, as this, I would keep this in my trade binder or whatever. Uh, it's funny that it's a spell chant. I can cast a movie. <laughs> so um, the interesting thing about it is that Sun Wukong, which is one of the uh, the Buddhist kind of roaming monkey person. That's he's in League of Legends. Lore. <laughs> is that where you know him from? Is from no, League? he's in a lot of lore. He's and what is he character. fighting? Like a giant Cthulhu? A Cthulhu. So Sun Wukong is fighting Cthulhu, and it's but not the Cthulhu, right? Yeah, this is a different... This is like a Cthulhu beast, but it's not Cthulhu himself. Yeah. Maybe it could be Cthulhu. I don't know. Yeah, I don't There's know what it is. He's fighting a giant thing of tentacles. And uh, either which way, if... I'm curious to know if this is the art style that they're going with for the movie, or if this is just a promotional art of the movie, alternately looking of it. I thought they were going to go for more of a bubbly anime style. I don't think that's going to be the art. Like, it, no anime is like that and it would be super high budget. I mean, it was like <laughs> that good of art. It, they could, though. We don't, we haven't seen anything from the movie except for this. And mm -hmm. this is one of those things where we have no idea what they're doing. The fact that they're doing the movie in the first place is wild. Yeah. And so <laughs> early on. Um, and of course, uh, in case you've missed uh, some of our older podcasts, we've had talked about this a little bit. Um, we're just super excited about it, so we keep talking about it. Uh, they're going to be releasing four OVA-style like uh, shorts, uh, probably nowhere uh, longer than 40 minutes, nowhere less than 20, uh, and essentially that's the movie, uh, or movies, however you want to phrase it. But uh, Which means if they're that short, they could do really high-budget artwork for it. Maybe. That'd be, that would be cool. I think they're just like following along with other card game animes like Yu-Gi-Oh, Vanguard, all that stuff. Yeah, but they actually have TV shows for all those things as well, which make it more understandable as to why they run into those things. Uh, of course, uh, Magic the Gathering, the biggest uh, card game there is, uh, is actually having a movie coming out soon as well, mm -hmm. which is kind of just funny to just see that everybody's kind of like... Yeah. Got that running in a way, weird ways. However, uh, there's they're actually releasing that on the big screen, uh, which is Super going to be hilarious budget. if that just fails or whatever. At least with the anime for uh, for Seville, no matter what it is, good or bad, 
just the fans are going to see it. And it's going to be one of those things that we can love or hate together, but the whole rest of the world isn't laughing at us. Can you imagine <laughs> the amount of people that are like, have you heard of that magic movie? And like, take their like daughter, oh, no. like they don't know anything about magic, take them there, and then just watch, like, why is that Jace boy getting picked on? And like, it's just yeah, so weird. I just feel like it's going to be like... Um Avatar, the last Airbender yes. movie. A whole bunch of this people is like don't gonna know be what's like going. that. It's <laughs> gonna be terrible. This is, yeah. What if you like movie adaptions to things that are popular? Is yeah. I don't. I don't think it's something that's gonna help the, their franchise as opposed to like this. This is something that's going to be there for us as a community, as a small group of people who will get to enjoy it. And for whatever it is, good or bad, we'll get to enjoy it. And if and it's good, it's, like, if it's good, then yes. Promotional, get a TV show. Yeah, super hype up things. to Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, get to number two in card game. Which is really important to uh, quickly mention. Force of Will is officially the fourth most played like TCG, the biggest one out there. Uh, first off, of course, is Magic the Gathering. Uh, next up was. Uh, either Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, They're either like Pokemon tied. or Yu-Gi-Oh. They're basically interchange or exchangeable at this point. Uh, interchangeable, whatever words. I know them. Uh, you, those are either second and third, and then Force of Will has beaten out a ton of other games. Vanguard is pretty far down the list now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Weiss Schwartz is tanked under there. Muddy uh, fight. Muddy fight. Dice Masters. Hero yeah. Clicks. Just a ton of yeah. games that have come out. That have had a lot more history than Force of Will, and Force of Will is boom right there on the top of that. Uh, and I would love to see them keep growing from here. And I think the anime is what they need to like get to second and third. If it actually it becomes could help it. Mm-hmm. popular and it's good, then this game could take off to new places. Yeah. Um. However, guys, that's about all that we really have for this week. Of course, next week we will have Patrick Collins back with us, and we will be definitely, like I said, trying to get a little bit more content out for you guys. Uh, Sorry for the past week. Know that we missed a a podcast and whatnot, but uh, as always, I'm your host, Jay Phillips. And I'm done. Take it easy, guys.